Hey there, welcome to another new episode of the Nitty Digit Podcast. I am your host, Jay, and yay, I made it. <laughs> um, quick note, thank you so much for understanding about my not recording last weekend. It was just not, I wasn't feeling too good. So, yeah, but now it's a beautiful rainy day. Yes, I said it. it is a beautiful rainy day, and it's the first day of autumn, and I am happy. So done with summer. Never been a summer person. Never. But anyway, I have some things to show you. First, what is off my needles? Yes, off. Are we at all surprised? No. Pretty. So these are my Lollipop Yarns um, Stripey Socks. It is in the watermelon colorway, or no, no, sorry. It's juicy, which represents watermelon. But it, I, um, I specially ordered these last year, about the same time last year, um, for my bosses. I was working a trial and these were our team colors. So, the light is not showing how deep the green is, but the fuchsia is pretty close. Um, team estrogen! Go team estrogen! It's really funny, I wore these yesterday at work, and I really wanted to be all like, look, look, boss, I'm wearing our team colors, but we were busy, so. If you can kind of see, this one is a little bit more pointy than this one. You know what happened? So I took this, this was the second sock, and I took, I was decreasing for the toe when I went to knit group this Tuesday, and I miscounted and whatnot, or something like that, and I uh, went to 12 stitches rather than uh, 16 stitches. Oops. So, it's okay, it still fits. I was too busy gabbing. So these are, the pattern is the Vanilla Latte Socks. Um, I apologize, I don't know the author, but it's on my Ravelry page. If you look up Vanilla Latte Socks as well. I did these on US 1s, 2.25 millimeter. And I'm very happy. This took me three weeks. Three weeks. Um, and the reason why it only, it only took me three weeks is because this is all I knit on. Yep, I did not knit on anything else except these. My foes. I just, I, I don't know. And oh, also you notice that they're not really twins. I tend to knit my stripey socks fraternal rather than twin because I just don't care. What you gonna do? Um, so yeah, I, I knit these monogamously. I just, so I was supposed, I think on the last podcast, I don't remember because I didn't, I didn't, of course I didn't make show notes because I was lazy. And I think I was going to say I was going to make the Mava, uh socks, which was a beautiful plated cable on the side socks from Nitty. I don't, I don't remember what issue. And I was also going to do the Traveling Woman Shawl by Liz Abenathy, Abenathy Feministy. Um, but that's a paid pattern, pattern and I'm kind of trying to stagger my purchases. And so I had to wait for that. So that's why that has not been started. But Mava is free. Why was I, why was I taking forever? It's just, my brain was not in the platy cable things. I think I, with all the cookie A socks with the cables and then um, doing the Wendy socks lace and cables, even though the cables were pretty easy, it just, I think my brain just could not do any more cables and complications. So I just decided I, if I keep going to it and saying, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this, I just need to find a better pattern for the yarn. Because I had caked it. I caked it ready to go and 
just wasn't, wasn't, I was feeling the yarn, just wasn't feeling the pattern. So I kind of, I went on Ravelry and I looked through and I decided to go with the Honey Badger, which is a free pattern from Irish Girl Knit Designs. She is local. She, I believe, is from um, San Mateo County area. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe she's local because she always, she's always talking about Bay Area stuff. So I'm like, yes! I'm from there! Anyway. So, and since I was done using my signature needles from my stripey, I just used these. US1 2.25 millimeter. The sock is the sock is Kitchen Sink Dye Works, which is no longer dying. Me so sad. Me so sad. I loved her. She was at my first Stitches South, and I bought a bunch. And I'm, and I'm glad that I did because, you know, then she announced that she was no longer dying. Is a sad. So the colorway is called Edgar. It's a beautiful bluish. And it is MCN Superwash Merino Wool, Cashmere, and Nylon. And it's her Lux Merino Fine. And it's a fingering, of course. That's why I'm making socks. Very sad. Very sad that this went away. And so, that is what I'm knitting. And it's been fabulous. Honey Badger is very easy. I would say it's very easy. It's a very simple, as you can see, it's a staggering lace. It's a very simple lace. It's, a, it's not even, it's basically yarn over, it's a free pattern, so I'm not revealing it. It's just yarn over, skip, 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 skip. It's skipping. And it, I, she explains in the pattern why she calls it a honey badger. I, I think it's because it's so home, honeycomby. And it's been fabulous. I'm finishing up the cuff part now. I'm fin getting the foot part and then going to get close to the heel. So it's been, again, monogamous knitting. What can you do? But I do plan to cast on all the things as peep, the peeps say, soon, because I can't do just socks. I need to put on a shawl. I do. So, it's gorgeous, and it's so soft. Oh my gosh, you guys. Mm. Not that Superwash Merino and Nylon isn't soft and Fabulous, but when you add that cashmere, it just adds some decadence that I just want to roll in it. <sighs> Clothing optional. Explicit tag. If I could, you know how, you know, Scrooge McDuck with his coins? I would, I would totally, I would totally swim in a sea of MCN yarn. I totally would. You know you want to too. Don't don't deny it. You do. Anyway, so I'm gonna show it to you again because I don't think I don't remember if I showed it or not. And it's been about three weeks, so I'm gonna do the traveling woman shawl in Lisa Souza, Emerald City. And I guess greens are just not there. You go. I put it back. Yeah. See that green? Yes. And traveling woman. I need more green. I need more green shawls. So, yes, sir, we pop. I'm, I'm going to purchase it tonight, as well as some other things, because I owe people things. I do. I do. So that's been my knitting. Nails. Nails. All right. So. My nails have not been bare, I promise you. It has been wonderfully painted, but with gel. So I decided I was gonna swatch the Under under Her Spell collection from the Jellish Mini that I got from Sally Beauty. And I first started out with this one. So I did for about a week, about one week, I just kept on Wanna Cuddle. And unfortunately, I did not put a picture, 
of what it was like. She would just want to cuddle. And I would have to describe it as being a dark chocolate brown. It's like very dark chocolate brown and just delicious. And it was like hot cocoa, dark chocolate, hot cocoa on, on my nails. And it was wonderful. And that's why I didn't want to top anything on it because it just looked so pretty. And I didn't think that it would look good with my brown, you know, my brown tan hands, but you know, I was fine with it. I do have to realize that with Jellish that I need to put three thin coats. I put two thick coats with the wanna wanna cut want to cuddle and it didn't dry all the way. I, I'm still learning the drying processes for each for each polish come with my LED lighting, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I put on too much thick coat and didn't let it dry all the way. And it wrinkled in some parts but so I learned not to do that um, but I also need to put three thin coats so that way it shows up better so so then the second week when it was amazingly still on my nails and lasting forever even with the wrinkles and everything I said all right okay let's top it so I topped it with Zoya Pro. And I've been I've been watching, rewatching Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and this just reminded me of Drusilla. I was on season two when I topped this. And I'm like, ah, it's my Drusilla. Even though she has nails where it's like the backwards French manicure, so but anyway. It reminded me very much of Drusilla. And I'm gonna show you the picture of it now. All right, and I'm, I'm deciding to put it that way so that way you know what it looks like and you don't have to wait. And then you can just skip through the music if you don't like, don't want to wait. I'll put it again. All right, so now after that, you know, it was dying, was starting to chip by the Zoe, it was starting to chip off the gel. But I think Monday. When did I? Oh, Sunday, excuse me, su Sunday. And so when I took it off with my non-acetone, I noticed that one of the nails was lifting and instead of bearing down and just pretending and you know saying it could go longer, I said, nope. So I soaked it off and then I put on Lust at First Sight, which is supposed to be a dark purple. It's supposed to be a dark purple. Well, so again, practicing and you know what not practicing and figuring out the gel polish with the LED light. Well, I was able to do the thin coats and putting on extra time with the LED light. But that's when I realized I needed the third coat because it was still very thin. You could still kind of see my nail. So um, let me show it to you now. You can see. So I definitely think that with Jellish, I need to put three thin coats. I'm going to see if other ones have to be like that, but I really think it's just Jellish. So, and I liked it. It was good. It just, it was more brown than I thought it was going to be. If I put on the third coat, I think it would have been more purple. But because it was only two thin coats, it just looked more brown than purple. Mauvey, mauvey brown. Um, so, that only because it, it, you know, I was done with the brown, okay? I wanted purple. So after maybe a couple of days, I then put on this, which is what is on my nails now. This is Julep Reese. Yeah. And unfortunately, because it's raining, the sun's not out. And this is the only reason why I would love sun is to show you the holographic, the holo sparkles that are in my nails. Oh my gosh. Seriously, you guys. It's amazing. Maybe if I put it, no, can't see it. There is no sun, you guys. There is only rain. And I'm only happy when it rains. But you can see I got my purple. But it has so many 
sparkles and it's hollow sparkles and it makes me happy and when I knit with my MCN it sparkles and I'm just in a happy place I need to be in a happy place so it makes me happy so I'm hoping this lasts much longer than my brew so I can be happy hollow sparkle oh there you go you can kind of see see the sparkles and what's interesting about this, so this was part of the new, the September collection, the city collection from Julep. And I'm really seeing this added bonus that they're doing. Like they're list, they're actually listening to their customers because there was, there was, I think they had a, a survey on Facebook or I think Facebook and Instagram of you know, saying, what do you want to see it, see more of? And everyone kept saying, we want more holo. We want more textures. We want more, you know, out of the box things. We're done with shimmers and creams. Give us more. And so with the city collection, they did more. They still did their frost and their shimmers because that's just julep and their creams. But they also had this holo sparkle. And I'm glad I added it on because it's just amazing. It's just, it's holo. It really is holo. It is holo to the max, and I would say this is more of a scattered holo than a linear, if that makes sense to anyone. Just beautiful rainbow sparkles that just makes me so happy. So, it's amazing. It is amazeball. Do I have to keep showing it to you? Because I keep, I will. I'm so happy I added this on. Not like I didn't like my colors, you know, for Boho Glam. It was the beautiful blue cream and the beautiful shimmery, sparkly, coppery, which I plan to use for an autumn, autumn nail soon. So that is what on what is on my nails, and I'm so happy. It makes me so happy. You should never paint your nails with something that doesn't make you happy, right? Right. All right. Book talk. So, I've been talking about genres and, you know, giving you ideas of different genres that you guys can, can read about, but I'm going to switch it up, and I'm going to do more spotlighting of authors. So, to, for this episode, I'm going to highlight one of my favorite authors. <sighs> there are two writers per se that I would gladly gladly sell my soul for and that's Aaron Sorkin and he's a writer because he he write he does write plays but he also is known for you know the West Wing and sport not sports night um the face ugh, the Facebook movie you know which one I'm talking about uh social, social network, the social network um, what did he, he's recently done something. He's recently working on something. But anyway, I would marry him and gladly do anything that he wants me to do. Yes, anything. The second guy, well, the second author, maybe not as fanatical. Really hope I don't, you know, freak people out. Seriously, I love Aaron Sorkin. I would... Maybe I'll do an Aaron Sorkin marathon tonight. Anyway, I love him. He's amazing. Anyway, second the second author that maybe not as fanatical, but he still makes me weep. We he makes me weep when he wants me wants me to be. He wants when he wants me angry. He, I get angry. It just his writing is beautiful and sexy and I just love it love it and that is Michael Ndache and I have multiple books you can see why I love him so much I would buy all of his books there's actually a collection that you can only buy in Canada that my friend has and she promised me I can have it if she dies I know I know kind of morbid and I don't really want I, you know 
I'd rather wait a very long time for that book. Um, but it's a huge collection of all his short stories, poems, books. Um, he did uh, some memoirs that she let me borrow and I read through it and I just, oh, so I fell in love with him. But the first book, of course, that I read that everyone knows is The English Patient. Now, yes, it was a movie. The movie was actually pretty good. The book, much better. Are we at all surprised? No, we're not at all surprised that the book is better. His, I think the best way to describe his writing is, is sensuous. And of course it says so, the San Francisco Chronicle says so in the, in the back, sensuous. But it is, it's very, it's very sense like just gorgeous 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 and I it did take me a lot longer to read this book because I I started this winter break of I was in school I was undergrad and I started this winter break and then I started school and I had to put this away because English undergrad you read you read a lot and unfortunately you can't read fun stuff so I had it I but when summer break came around, I finished it, and I loved it, and I wanted to marry it. I really say a lot that I would marry it, but seriously, I it it really has to take a lot for me to marry you, or marry something. So, <laughs> it was just amazing. So, then I went on, and then I met, you know, years went by, and my friend showed me the collection, and she's like, oh my god. So, I'm like, yes! read that and I went on and I got so many other ones. The Visadero I think was his last one which was okay. I think I liked, I actually bought a Nils Ghost but then I gave it to my friend because she didn't have it and I said you, if you haven't read this which you probably have you need to read this and so I gave that to her and then I read, I really believe this is his last one and if there's a new one, I need to find it and dive into it. Mm. It was okay, but it's it, the language was still wonderful, but this the plot line was not to my liking. I think I wanted something a little bit different to happen. Um, but I really suggest the first book that you read of Michael Landace is The English Patient. Because, of course, there's a reason why people were fanatic about it and it became a movie. It's beautiful. The language is beautiful. This plot line is emotional and beautiful. It's the best way to describe it. It's beautiful and you can feel the pain. Just feel it. So, I really think you should start with that. And then, um, read a Nils Ghost. Read... There's a book that he wrote later on, or actually before The English Patient, that has some of the same characters. I can't remember the name of it. Actually, maybe it's in his list. I have more books. Um, da, 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 da. Where is it? Where's yours? Oh, um, In the Skin of a Lion. I believe that's the one before. And then he has some... He has one memoir that he wrote called Running in the Family. That was a very intriguing, that's a memoir of his life and everything. It was very intriguing and still in the same vein of amazing, just amazing. And then I bought Coming Through the Slaughter. That was the last book I read of his. So, but this is, this one was very interesting. Um, this is about so to kind of give you a synopsis for each one, do I need to explain the English patient? No. Okay. The Visadero is is more of a family oriented. Let me read the back for you. In the 1970s in Northern California, a father and his teenage daughters, Anna and Claire, work their farm with the help of Coop, an enigmatic young man who makes his home with them. Theirs is a makeshift family until it is shattered by an incident 
incident of violence and sets fire to the rest of their lives. De Visadera takes us from San Francisco to the ruckus back rooms of Nevada's casinos and eventually to a landscape of southern France. As the narrative moves back and forth through time and place, we find each of the characters trying to gain some foothold in a present shadowed by the past. And you'll notice that he likes to jump in time. He's not lean, linear at all, and that's what makes it interesting. I guess I like more of a jumping back and forth rather than linear because it just makes, it just keeps you guessing. And you, as you have noticed, I like to keep guessing in my books. So it, it really just adds, I mean, he doesn't do it all the time, but this was definitely very much a back and forth, just like with the English patient was a very back and forth between time and places. And But as I said, this, the language was still beautiful and wonderful, but the plot line I thought was lacking. It was, it was not, it was not grab me and hold me plot line. So if you, if you need to read all of his books, this should be the last one. The next, uh, I told the other coming, I already told you about his memoir, about his life, and, um, the old name used to be Cylon, C-E-Y-L-O-N, not Cylon as in Battlestar Galacta, Galactica, oh, what's the name of it, I'll remember, of course, after I record, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course, anyway, um, I'll remember it later. So this one coming through the slaughter is very oh, this it's small. It's very it's it's actually shorter than his usual. This was actually written earlier. I thought this was written after, but I I don't know. But let me read you the back. This haunting atmospheric story set in a sensual erotic world is one of the best loved of Michael and Dace's novels. At the turn of the century, the Storyville district of New Orleans had some 2,000 prostitutes, 70 professional gamblers, and 30 piano players. But it had only one man who played the cornet like Buddy Bolden. He who cut hair by day at N. Joseph's shaving parlor and at night played jazz, unleashing unforgettable wildness and passion in crowded rooms. Self-destructively in love with two women, he embodied all the dire claims that music places on its accolades. At the age of 31, Buddy Boulder went mad. From these sparse facts, Michael Ondaatje has created a story as beautiful and chilling as a New Orleans funeral procession where even the mourners dance. So, yes, so Buddy Bolden was a actual man and he and Dache kind of expanded his life and kind of created a story out of it and it was beautiful and just whew, <laughs> it was good as I said language I am very much a language reader hence why I'm an English major um, Plotline, of course, is important, but I've always been the type of person that fell in love with language, just the beauty of it all. And I read, I read to expand my my vocabulary, of course, and expand my mind and whatnot, and live in in a different world. But I also read. So I can enjoy language and live in it, if that makes sense. Um, so uh, he also writes poetry, no surprise, and this is called the Cinnamon Peeler. And I had to get this because in the collection, in my friend's collection, it has his poetry, and I fell in love with the title poem, and I just. Couldn't. Yeah, if I could find it, you would think I would. I would put a little. Here. What's what's table of contents for? Mm, ah. Sorry, I am not sorry. <sighs> the cinnamon peeler. If I were a cinnamon peeler, I would ride your bed and leave the yellow bark dust on your pillow. 
Your breasts and shoulders would reek. You can never walk through markets without the profession of my fingers floating over you. The blind would stumble certain of whom they approached, though you might bathe under rain gutters, monsoon. Here on the upper thigh at the smooth pasture neighbor to your hair or the crease that cuts your back, this ankle. You would be known among strangers as the cinnamon peeler's wife. You could hardly glance at you before marriage never touch you, your keen nosed mother, your rough brothers. I buried my hands in saffron, disguised them over smoking tar, helped the honey gatherers. When we swam once, I touched you in water and our bodies remained free. You could hold me and be blind of smell. You climbed the bank and said, this is how you touch other women, the grass cutter's wife, the lime burner's daughter. And you searched your arms for the missing perfume and knew. What good is it to be the lime burner's daughter, left with no trace, as if not spoken to in the act of love, as if wounded without the pleasure of a scar? You touched your belly to my hands in the dry air and said, I am the cinnamon peeler's wife. Slum. what I'm talking about. I am the cinnamon peeler's wife. Smell. I just keep, I have to keep saying it. Anyway, Michael and Dace. Love him, hate him, swim in him. I really going to have to put explicit tag. <laughs> very sensual, very amazing. I love his work. So, all right. Wish list. Um, none. I have not been grabbing hands. It actually helps if I stop reading the nail blogs. <laughs> I am so behind on my nail blogs and other stuff, and I haven't I haven't been looking at yarn because I have been put on a very, very, very strict yarn and nail polish diet. The only nail polish I'll be getting is from Julep. So you may get bored. <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm really gonna have to make sure that I swatch things that I haven't swatched before and also that are not Julep's. <laughs> kind of stagger the ones that I've gotten previously that I haven't swatched for you guys. Yeah, because I've been I've been put on a very, very strict. Self-inflicted, but very strict so I won't be buying yarn or nail polish other than julep for the next year I mean maybe if I have money left over I could see if I can you know but I can't go cool spree stitches west yes I'm not buying any yarn from at stitches west even though I'm going I'm not gonna buy any that's the plan. If I do have some extra money left over, I will buy one skein of yarn or something like that. But mm -mm. good thing I'm not going to stitch a south. Jeez. That would have been hard. But yeah. So I've been kind of taking myself away and not doing, not having the grabby hands. But I have been kind of grabby hands for some knitting books. Um, the Stitching in the Stack, Knits for Librarians. Them. Of course, why wouldn't I? Um, I really want that one, and I really want the Fit to Flatter by Amy Herzog book because, again, trying to do, trying to be more adventurous with my knitting and do more sweater knitting, and I really think that would be helpful so that way I can get sweaters that fit perfectly the way I want it. So, yeah. So I've been grabbing hands for that, but everything else not enough to show you guys sorry but I do have my last purchase yes my last purchase for a very long time it's from my friend Alicia purple goddess I love you you're amazing can I just say you're amazing you can kind of see it if you if you follow me on Instagram you know exactly what it looks like if you don't well, hopefully the light's really good because oh my god!
No, it's not. You don't understand the beautiful sparkly rainbow. Oh, come on. Come on, camera. You're not going to do that. Right? If I can darken it. Oh, my God. Oh, no, don't brighten. No, no. Oh, my God, you guys. Oh, there you go. Oh, my God, you guys. It's so sparkly rainbow. Oh, my gosh. Don't understand. It's so beautiful. I had pre-ordered this. And I actually could have gotten any other color. But I said, and I, and I actually thought about it. Because Alicia's like, okay, what color do you want? What gradient do you want? I kept thinking, like, I really want rainbow. I really want the rainbow. But, but, but I also wanted to make shrugs. I really want to make a shrug or, you know, but, or I just, I, I wanted to be different, but I couldn't think of anything else but the beautiful rainbow. And it's sparkly! <laughs> it's so sparkly good. Oh my gosh. So I have some ideas. The TFIMP ladies gave me some ideas. And Alicia and Purple Goddess did as well, of course. Well, she is a TFIMP. -er. She's amazing. You guys, if you haven't bought anything from her, please do. She's amazing. She's wonderful. She's fantastic. And if at all possible, she will try to do what you need. Seriously, she is amazing. She will, she, ugh, she's amazing. You guys need to buy from her. So, anyway, this is the full Monty Gradient gold in the gold finger, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and 5% Stellina. And it's about 400 grand, 400 yards. So, I will be doing... This needs to be a shawl because if I do a shrug, the, the, the grading is just not going to look right unless I knit it sideways and then sew the sleeves, but eh, I really think this should be a wonderful shawl, so I'm going to do that. I have some ideas. And it's sparkly. Did I mention the sparkles? Yes, sorry, Bob. Oh, my God. This is the best way to mark the start of a diet. Because then you could see and say, oh, look, look at the beauty. Look at the beauty. You could probably buy more once you get, once your budget is set, right? Once things are better. This is what to look forward to. Because the strict, the strict budgeting is more to help me in my money, <laughs> my habits. Like, once I can get a flow and get a budget going and figuring out everything, I'm not going to be such in a strict diet. So that way I know my limits, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have a, I actually got a spreadsheet going. I know. I don't, I really don't do spreadsheets. I'm more of a word girl. But there is a spreadsheet now. So, anyway, that does not mean it's going to be depressing over here. There's, I'm thinking of ways, like, I don't want to do any, I don't want to keep searching for things because then I'll just start buying. It's just, I'm trying to learn good habits. So, I'm going to think of ways to make this a less depressing <laughs> part of the show and um, do something cool. I'll have to think of some ideas. Think of some ideas. I, I'm on a ideas free so there we go I kind of want to cast it on now no I have older stash older stash to do which I guess leads me to etc 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 um again I just wanted to say thank you so much for understanding on everything 
um, not podcasting last weekend. Again, just wasn't, just wasn't feeling, not, just not feeling good, really. I just, I, at work, we, we kind of did musical chairs in the, in the offices and I packed up and moved two attorney's offices and I did too much and and with my fibro it's the problem the problem with my job I mean I'm very lucky to have my job that I have right now with everything and and whatnot but the problem is it is a physical job and you can't I can't just say dude I can't do this I have fibromyalgia you just have to do it and I mean they're very understanding and you know they really do wish that I would I would stop pushing myself but if I don't push myself it doesn't get done um, because I can't ask for help which goes into office politics that I don't want to get into but basically there's no help I'm there's no help I'm the physical pack mule in the, in the office so instead of whining about my fibromyalgia I just do it but it really did hurt and it really did kind of set me back and it really it took me a very long time to recover and then with other things going on in my life that I won't talk about I just it just <laughs> I really needed to have that weekend to myself and just recover and and whatnot but I'm better now see I'm jumpy <laughs> so thank you for understanding and then so that also leads to the prizes I guarantee you your prizes are gonna go out okay Apple I'm really sorry I'm blanking. see memory gone um, but I know Apple with your with your nail polish and yarn is going out at least by Monday I'm going to generate the stamp and everything tonight and send it out to you on Monday morning and Angie Sun Daisy yours is going to be coming to you tonight okay I just needed to make sure that you know the monies are all there so I'm again thank you for understanding and being wonderful um, but again with how things were it, that's just how it happened so I know I owe you guys stuff <laughs> so don't worry it's in the back of my mind and thank you so much for understanding and I hope you enjoy it when once you get it um what else run Ferris tomorrow I'm gonna be a pirate I was gonna dress up as a pirate and do the show in my pirate garb so that way you got you guys can see it but I wanted to be in big big floppy sweater and just no <laughs> I wanted to be in floppy sweater mode since it's raining it's the first day of fall I can drink my pumpkin spice coffee and not feel guilty that it's still summer and I can knit and I can knit and I can knit and just enjoy the rain I would have danced in it like the crazy woman that I am but then I don't want to be seen as crazy by my neighbors so only you guys get to know I'm crazy so and I needed I needed this rain I really did I'm so done with summer but yeah but it's not gonna rain on tomorrow for the Ren fair I'm which I would have been fine if it was rainy, but then, you know, it's not as fun when you're going outside. But I'm excited. I'm so excited. I love Run Fair. And I am going to take a picture of me in my power gear. So once you, I'm probably, this is probably going to be up Sunday night. And you'll have pictures of me in my, my fun little garb. So. Anyway, yep, I believe that's it. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I know three weeks has gone by. I, I know once I hit stop, I'm going to remember something and say, ah. I think that's it. 
All right, you guys, you can find me on Instagram, jcraftygeek. You can find me at Twitter at j underscore crafty underscore geek. You can find me on Ravelry as Knitterly Book Lady. And we also have a Ravelry group for the podcast. Check it out. Um, if you also want to check out past episodes, all of the episodes of, Knit, of the Nitty Digit Podcast is at is on YouTube. If you search for J Hollowich, H O L O W I C H, you will find it. Unfortunately, for some odd reason, if you search Nitty Digits, it doesn't really pop up for some odd reason. I really I need to figure out, it's probably the tags. I could probably put it in the tags. They'll find it better if I use tags and with my name. Yeah, okay. I'll do that. So just in case if you watch it through YouTube, that's great. Um, if Because again, with Podbean, I had to take out most of the past episodes. So if you're having issues with iTunes, that's where you'll find most of the episodes anyway. Um, if you are watching through YouTube rather than iTunes, check out Ravelry. And you aren't if and if you're not on Ravelry, check out Ravelry. Ravelry is the best, amazing place, and join our group. Um, no, 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 no. I believe that's it. You guys have a great nitty digit day. Bye. I'm only happy when it rains.